Well, this keynote session, Back to the Future, and that's the new Indian in town. Keeping up the momentum going, up next we have Preeti Reddy, CEO of South Asia, Inside Division in Kantar, who is a strong proponent of technology-driven innovation in research, adoption of new, non-conscious methods of understanding consumers, and applying sophisticated analytical capabilities to integrate data to help transform consumer insights into business impact for clients. She's somebody who, over the last three decades of experience in consumer marketing, consulting, and research, helping leading Indian and multinational companies make informed decisions using consumer understanding. Well, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Preeti, for joining us and giving us your valuable time today and being a part of the E4M Conclave. With this, I'd now like to pass on the stage and screen over to you. Um, thanks, Pavna, and uh, hello, everybody. I have a presentation, so I'm going to share my screen. And uh, I'm also going to switch off my video because so that I don't distract you from, uh, uh, you know, distract you from the truths that the pandemic has revealed in every facet of human life. And uh, I've, uh, you know, we at, at Cantar have, uh, uh, have uh, been, even despite the social uh, distancing, uh, we've been listening to and observing people across the country trying to understand how Indians have reacted and adapted to these unprecedented times. And uh, so, you know, I wanted to give you a sense of the path that the consumers have traveled and what lies ahead in 2021, because a lot of what has happened in 2020 will endure and will continue in 2021. So let's look first look back and reflect on 2020. Uh, yeah, okay. So the pandemic has, uh, uh, first of all, it's taught us a new language. There are, you know, clearly new words and phrases that describe the sentiments of last year and new phrases include, you're on mute. What has been overwhelming actually is the change that it brought on us. To, uh, we were forced to learn, we were forced to adapt, we were forced to equip ourselves with several new things, whether it's the way we lived or the way we thought or the way we behaved. Uh, but there are some common themes that played out this year. One was, one, the first is one of apprehension. We were all anxious and to a great extent, even despond despondent, and we still are. The second is that we are worried about the future, the uncertainty and the helplessness about what the future has in store. The third is, as consumers, a new way of living and a continuous re-engineering that we've had to do to adopt to ever evolving situations. And finally, the social distancing with heightened uh, concern and on health and immunity. Now, the, uh, the it, it pandemic has impacted not only consumers, but also brands and businesses, uh, because they've had to reevaluate and rejig strategies and the way of doing business and marketing. They've had to battle changing buying patterns, brand preferences, loyalties, handle supply chain, as well as trade and distribution setups, and to rethink their communications, like being caught up in a never ending storm. The Indian economy uh, actually shrank almost 24% in the second quarter, year on year in the, in the second quarter of 2020, which is much worse than what had originally been forecasted of about 18% drop. When an economy contracts by nearly a fourth, it is bound to affect all our lives, one way or the other. We at Canada had done a, a survey, a large-scale survey in urban India, covering about 10,000 uh, 10, consumers, 15 to 55 years old, in the top 35 cities. And we spoke to them about their brand usage, attitudes, demographics, a whole host of uh, topics. And th that survey revealed that a staggering 72% of India's urban population actually claims to have been economically impacted by the pandemic. And, uh, and when we sliced this further, we saw two Indias emerging. One is that one that is highly impacted uh, and another which is a little more insulated. The highly impacted were the lower socioeconomic classes, the smaller towns and the east and south zones. 
where the extent of loss is higher and the worries were much graver. Uh, this in turn then led to financial prudence. No wonder that consumers are more fearful of the economic impact of COVID than its impact on their health and well-being. The overall sentiment now is largely negative and cautious, and it's that's a difference from what we saw in the beginning months of the of of the pandemic when consumers were hopeful that it would all end quickly and they'd be back at work by July and, and you know things will be fine. They now realize that this is going to go on, and they actually believe that the situation will worsen in time, both in terms of the overall econo economy and their personal finances. And as uh, is a general tendency during a crisis, consumers are focusing on buying of essentials, uh, purchases that they believe are discretionary are being deferred. And this is typically large ticket durables, uh, homes, large appliances. And even among those who are investing during the crisis, we see a change in the way they select investment vehicles. Today, safety and security of capital seems to be the key decision criteria. They would rather protect capital than chase higher returns. And this obviously has implications for BFSI brands and the com communication planks that they, uh, that they employ. Now, not everything was really was so bad. One of the uh, interesting things that happened was that although social distancing encouraged people to stay apart, it actually brought people together in many new ways. And you know, it strengthened family and community bonds. Uh, they felt consumers felt a greater connection with their families and their extended communities. And they expect these connections to stay intact long after the virus has, has actually been contained. Shrinking personal spaces is one of the biggest challenges of today. Consumers are prisoners at home with limited space and, and a, a whole host of discrete activities such as working, learning, shopping, socialization, all of that has to be done at home. This is really, you know, an, an analogy really is you have so many needs and wants, but you have limited resources. You only have that one house or, that, or those few rooms. I mean, let's take the case of a housewife. From a, ha a earlier happy situation of being alone at home for a large part of the day, she's today a hassled and overworked individual. Earlier kids and husbands would be away for most of the day, now with school from home, work from home, she not only has to ensure that they are kept busy and doing what they're supposed to do, but they have to ensure that they're constantly fed. And in the bargain, she has lost her space and time, you know, maybe just watching her afternoon TV or stepping out in the evening to meet friends or buy her vegetables. And she's actually feeling the pressure of loss of personal space. Uh, Today, consumers consciously want to do a lot more for their health. Pre-COVID, when we spoke to consumers, we always found a gap between desire and action. In almost 50% of individuals would say, I want to lose weight or I want to be healthier, but actually actualizing that desire never really happened. It happened to very few. The pandemic has changed that. Health has now come to core focus and consumers are trying different means to ensure they stay health and healthy and fit. Uh, it could be, and there are four really pillars that they're looking at, nutrition, hygiene, fitness, and the usage of supplements to build in immunity. And while we've spoken about the concerns and worries due to COVID, it's also led to some positive changes in that it has given all of us some much needed time for personal pursuits and self-education. 72% of Indians claim that they have learned new skills over the past few months. And these skills range from cooking to more artistic pursuits, learning new languages, enhancing technology skills, a whole host of, uh, of activities. Uh, consumers have also learned to improvise when there are constraints. Um, you know, when maids could not come, they dis discovered robots. Uh, in the post process, existing habits have been discarded and new ways to consume are invented. Convenience and safety are most important. And that which is why online shopping, for instance, has seen an unprecedented surge. However, 
because of restricted movements, cautious spending, and availability being a concern, brand loyalty is slowly taking a beating. Uh, brands will have to work that much harder to actually retain consumers, uh, uh, you know, because consumers no longer have the, uh, the only way, place where they can browse actually is online. They don't, they don't browse in stores. Their, their shopping behavior has changed completely. Digital, of course, we know many people have said this was a lifeline. It's now a digital life. Uh, online education tops the list when it comes to usage of the internet, followed by online entertainment and then new, following news online. And uh, as with all other aspects, entertainment is tilting towards digital. There's a huge growth in engagement levels for online videos. And it also offers much needed personal space in an otherwise congested life. So all that I've said is I think really reiteration of, uh, of what many of us know is just exemplified and there are numbers behind it. But maybe now with this understanding of what happened in 2020 to the new, to the Indian consumer, it is time to do some future gazing. So for the next part of my uh, session, I will actually try and give you a sense of the path that lies ahead in 2021. Of uh, ten, 10 trends that we are seeing. First is that the early days of quarantine life were seen as an opportunity to nurture family relationships, shared times, shared space, shared responsibility. But today, almost 60% want to actually get back to their colleges and workplaces. Kids have started feeling claustrophobic at home. Men cannot be men as they cannot go out. And the mother feels she's growing unpopular every day because she has to play the bad cop ever so often. So that heady sense of togetherness is actually really losing its sheen. They're, uh, they're together, but they're alone. And they're yearning for that lost my space. The other is that we said, I said earlier, there was this growing sense of community and you know coming together on Zoom calls and, and all of that. But Today, people are actually physically restricting themselves to smaller, siloed personal circles. There's a hesitation to return to broad socioeconomic, sociocultural groups. We're basically making our own small tribes. If I don't know you, I don't want to know you. Because you might put me at risk for contracting the virus. In fact, 68% said that they will continue to practice social distancing and keep avoiding unknown people and busy places in the future. So there's a return to the tribe. This is an interesting one in that uh, gender narratives are going back in time because COVID-19 has raised really difficult questions on gender roles. Men have faced an exposure of their domestic inexperience even as they stayed home under the shadow of a loss of income. About a third lacked a, lacked a sense of job security, and many had actually lost jobs. And that anxiety was really high, particularly high among the 35 plus providers. So, this led men to this feeling of helplessness and melancholy. On the other hand, managing elasticity of home and work is not new for the woman. She's experienced in expanding and contracting her role. The economic uncertainty forced her to become creative. You've seen the number of home cooks, the number of women entrepreneurs that have come up and how they're focusing on new skills for themselves and for their staff and monetizing those skills. So they are, women are facing yet another crisis with agility and intelligence and resilience. This uh, I spoke about earlier, and this is going to continue that uh, it has the pause during the pandemic has given us the time and motivation for self improvement. 72% believe that the coronavirus emergency gave them an opportunity to learn something new. Half want to focus on their personal development. More than half are eating healthier. They are claiming to be exercising or reading more. But they're doing it with discipline and the rigorous discipline in pursuing these activities has actually provided meaning and purpose to people's lives. I'm becoming a better person. I'm improving myself. There is, there is meaning to my life. Fifth one is that the race for immunity. It's a, it has become an obsession to build immunity 
as everybody waited anxiously for a vaccine, now the vaccine has come, hopefully uh, there will be some loosening of this. But right now, uh, categories that have focused on immunity have grown significantly because immunity and building that has, as I said, become an obsession. Chaban Prash, we know, doubled its volumes. Adult wellness drinks have experienced 50% growth in volume. And what has started off as a race to build immunity is now emerging as a long-term consciousness of health and hygiene. And this is one behavior that they say they will continue to maintain in the future. The home is losing its innocence. It's no longer a place of refuge. Spaces at home are being redefined. The bedroom is doubling as a gym. The dining table is a desk or a boardroom. Home objects and spaces are like multipurpose Swiss knives. And retailers have actually reported a surge in demand for office furniture. Uh, personal zones are being carved and the same physical space is being used for retreat, for work and for study. And this is a new coping mechanism because the home is no longer a refuge or a hoping or something that helps protects you from what happens outside. Uh, seventh trend we picked up, the economic immunity is the new sense of nationalism. The financial suffering that consumers have seen during the pandemic has set a belief that beyond health, the nation needs economic immunity. Therefore, a protectionist sentiment towards buying made in India to support the community economy. 61% are buying more local brands. 79% are in favor of buying Indian made products, even as they may not be able to or willing to pay more for the same. But that sentiment is one of, uh, you know, protect our economy. For companies and brands, being Indian is not only about being about the origin, it is also about the economic contribution to India and making India Atmanirbhar. And that is one sentiment that is really, uh, uh, what shall I say, has really evoked uh, and has really resonated with consumers. The eighth trend we've seen, one is that brands must solve, not sell. Uh, customer expectations from brands have evolved. Today, brands need to be there for a purpose. They have to give you emotional support, but they also have to be there like a friend to give you practical utility and to help you in, in, in navigating this new life that, that we are having to adapt to constantly. So purpose is important, purpose remains important, but purpose coupled with utilitarian, practical help and, and friendship uh, uh, for, for the consumer. Social media we know has found its soul. In the pandemic, the social media provided both emotional and professional support. On one hand, it was a platform for business and the other hand, it was a source of hope, love, courage to face the crisis. And uh, social media actually captured the emotional roller coaster of the country beautifully. We do a, we do an analysis of uh, of uh, sentiment on on social media, and uh, we found that the what we call net sentiment, which is positive minus negative sentiment, the net sentiment uh, dropped to its lowest point of minus eighteen percent in March, the so where consumer sentiment was at its absolute lowest. Then it went down to one minus 1% 1 January and finally ended in plus 6% in December. So with news of the vaccine, with, with things opening up, uh, sentiment has improved. But social media has been a, a great harbinger and a bellwether of what consumers are feeling and how, um, you know, and how they are absorbing news, entertainment, video, audio content, all of that. Finally, we found new heroes. This is the rise of simple human souls who put others before self. Shy of narcissism, shy of, uh, of being in the limelight. People are embracing these new heroes who may not rule the silver screen 
or us not be celebrities or stars, but help when people are in distress. Thousands of Indians are finding ways to help those who are more vulnerable. I mean, they're publishing data, they're launching donation drives, they are sewing masks, they are video chatting with senior citizens, they're mobilizing support for migrant workers, they're countering fake news, they're making, you know, going viral to remind people to do simple things like washing their hands. These are today's heroes more than anybody else. Therefore, to end, I just want to say that 2020 was an unforgiving year that has revealed our fears and perhaps will remain a reflection of the reassurances we seek. And we look forward to 2021 with a line from the Woodstock era peace activist, Wavy Gravy, said, dare to struggle, dare to grin. We will see some of both. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Preeti, for giving us your valuable time and being here at the E4M Conclave. Uh, well, we really valued uh, what you said uh, today, and I'm sure these learnings are going to go a long way for a lot of years ahead. Thank you once again for sharing your Thank expertise. You. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, also, if you may have any questions directed to our speakers, please uh, do type it in the Q&A tab, as we'd love to take it on with our speakers. And uh, joining us at 4.50, PM uh, Indian Standard Time is going to be our next speaker. So we do have some time in hand wherein I'd request uh, if you know our attendees, we'd give you some time. Uh, Preeti is uh, still around. Uh, if, you, if you have any questions, please do type it in the Q&A tab and uh, do let us know if we can direct the same to her so that we could have an engagement with Q&A as well. So ladies and gentlemen, this is all happening right now at uh, the E4M conclave and uh, the, all we got to do is keep uh, hashtagging E4M Conclave. And for all the viewers, uh, remember that this is going live uh, on uh, Facebook, on Twitter, as well as on LinkedIn. So we'd, we're going to give you some time to type in certain questions if you do have for uh, Ms. Reddy, and we would direct, that, uh, direct the same uh, in that. But meanwhile, if I could request the team, since we do have time in hand, if you could have a, one of our AVs being played for our audience, while as we get, uh, uh, also there are a few questions, uh, you know, which are there. Uh, Ms. Reddy, if you'd be open to that, uh, there are certain questions which have been coming, but unfortunately due to uh, time, uh, we yeah. couldn't ask them to our previous speakers. So would you be yeah. there uh, open for that? For, ask, for questions asked to others? Yes speakers uh, no 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 not to the other speakers uh, huh. uh, they've just that we've not uh, gotten time uh, to oh, okay, you know okay, okay, take okay, on the okay. questions since uh, since our afternoon so yeah, it okay. be open and interest to the audience so if there's any you. questions yeah i have a little time yeah okay sure okay. Uh, so also there is uh, one question is that you know how would you look at media spend uh, and business growth reviving to pre covid levels or at least mm. begin looking at a similar growth trajectory? It's a tough question because different sectors are behaving differently. Uh, I don't think there is a universal one size fits all growth pattern. I mean, we have seen uh, FMCG, others, you know, other speakers have said this is coming back, personal care. Uh, but we know that uh, travel and uh, hospitality will take time to come back. Uh, our prognosis is that uh, it will take at least to till the first quarter of 2022 for us to come back to 2019 kind of levels. I mean, I may be wrong, but this is what we have, uh, what our clients have told us and then what we have seen in terms of consumer behavior, etc. So uh, consumer behavior is coming back, buying is coming back, but it's nowhere near yet the levels of 2019. It's, sure. Uh, the pandemic has been a shock to the system. I think we, are, uh, we have to be pretty clear about that. Absolutely. Also, yeah. uh, one question has just come in. Uh, it says that what are the three biggest trends that you think have changed in the consumer behavior? So if you could, I know you did speak a lot about uh, the trends mm. in basic, but if you could just say about the trends uh, which have, uh, you know, changed in the consumer behavior currently. The one and the one most important thing is that shopping behavior has changed. 
it's a very very uh, very uh, distinct uh, uh, difference you can see uh, we still don't we still haven't gone back to uh, you know uh, going to malls we still we, we are but most of our shopping is actually now done online there are two or three kinds of shopping behavior that uh, consumers are are, are uh, following one is all the browsing and, reg and regular stuff, et cetera, is bought online or actually online means on the phone, really. Then there is fresh, which you just go outside the store and you pick up or an emergency. And then there is the indulgence, experience, shopping, et cetera, which still has to come back. That hasn't come in. So shopping behavior has changed. The other is that, uh, uh, I mean, the way we work and the way we interact has definitely changed. It's uh, it, I, many companies are saying, for instance, that runs, that you know they're not going to go back to. Um, they will always have a hybrid model. So that's a fundamental change in the way we work. You know, we have a system by which uh, it was an industrial area, industrial era system of offices and cabins and all that. Some of that changed, but now that is dramatically changed. And I think the third thing is the, the uh, uh, especially for Indians, uh, the concern with health and hygiene has definitely has you know has definitely changed. We were not we as a as a nation we are you know we are quite uh, cavalier with our with our health and our hygiene levels. Uh, I think they say that has given us the immunity that we need also, but it is now. Uh, it's very f top of mind, health and hygiene. Sure. And one more, fourth one yes. is that the uh, uh, our spending has has you know we till till 2019 we were uh, uh, I mean the economy was slowing down and so people were still spending. They are uh, spending now, but slowly and on and on uh, not on indulgence categories so much. Apparel is not being bought so much. Uh, large ticket items are not being bought so much so that is i would say those are the four most significant things that have changed absolutely uh miss reddy there's another question which is coming from one of our attendees neha and mm -hmm. uh, she asked that what do you think about the growth uh, trajectory for the luxury sector mm -hmm. what kind of media uh, spend trends do you foresee that's uh, for the luxury question. sector yes luxury sector in particular i think the luxury sector will take the longest to come back, take absolutely the longest to come back. Uh, the ones who were already in the long, you know, I mean, it's uh, in, in India, it was uh, what we called affordable luxury was growing. So it was move luxury was growing from the absolute top niche. Uh, you know, it was it was uh, moving down uh, a, a socioeconomic tier. The ones who could afford luxury will continue to be able to do so. But that movement down to a larger base of affordable luxury, that has stopped. I don't think that will come back in a hurry. Sure. Uh, Ms. Reddy, would you be open to just two more questions if you do have time? Okay. We do have certain okay. questions. Yeah, uh, sure. one of, yeah. Uh, Ms. Yeah. Reddy, okay. one of the questions from our attendees is that how do you see brand uh, bifur bifurcating their marketing budgets across advertising mediums and channels advertising mediums and channels i'm not sure i'm the best qualified to answer that i think oh, we okay. should have somebody from the media business uh, do that i see Srini or somebody in in the office of pk who will probably give you more honest and correct answers uh, the only thing that i think everybody has spoken about is that uh, you know this is the age of digital and digitals has, who I think Mark Reed himself is saying it's no longer a lead generation medium. It's a, it's, it's a very mainstream medium now. Sure. Also, uh, uh, Ms. Reddy, there's one question which is common is that in uh, the backdrop of pandemic, what are some of the suggestions that you'd like to give it to the brand currently? Your top few suggestions which you'd mm -hmm. like to pass it on to the brand? A uh, couple of things. One is that uh, uh, you must remain salient. You must not say that uh, you know this is a pandemic and therefore I can I can shut shop for some time and and then come back. Consumers remember. You know, consumers forget easily and consumers remember. 
So, uh, so you should be, uh, you should continue to be present. The second is that the tonality of your communication, you have to be careful about it now. Uh, there were some brands that did it exceedingly well during the pandemic, some who actually got it quite wrong. And uh, the third is that I was, as I was saying that your brand loyalty will come from brands, uh, from consumers feeling that you were there for them when they needed you, you know. And the, a prime example I give is of, uh, for instance, the telecom industry, you know, at a time when uh, the only linkage that you had with the outside world was your internet and your mobile phone. Uh, they didn't, you know, when consumers were really vulnerable, they didn't uh, take advantage of that. They were there, their services worked. They did all kinds of things to make life easier for consumers. Similarly, the food delivery guys, uh, when you know you couldn't get, uh, you literally had to, you know, you couldn't go out. Somebody had to come and give you food. Uh, and many times, you know, I I was in Bombay at that time. Many times in that in the building that I live, the only uh, other human being I ever saw was the Swiggy guy. You know. And that's how you build emotional connect with your uh, with your consumer. So my advice would be, you know, be there, stay salient, and and also you know uh, be agile. Because what did the what did these guys do? What did the telecom guys do? What did the food aggregators do? They discovered new needs and new new uh, consumer tensions, which they took advantage of, and that I think has paid off. Sure. And just for the final question, Mr. Eddie, otherwise okay. I'm sure our conversations okay. will keep continuing because a lot of uh, questions are coming from our attendees. Sure. Uh, one which has just come in at 4.40 uh, p.m. IST is that with frequent changes every month in the consumer behavior and preferences due to COVID, how hmm. validated are the insights found from the recent researches? Well, the... Uh... You know, I mean, consumer behavior changes all the time. Consumer attitudes change all the time. That is why we need to keep abreast of what consumers are doing and thinking. And, uh, and you know, that's what good marketers do. They don't assume that something that they did 15 years ago is still valid. The only thing is that what the pandemic has done is that it has made the, the, the frequency uh, of consumer behavior change or consumer attitude change uh more faster or you know the shorter in that sense so uh yes absolutely you you have to keep abreast of consumer changing behavior i mean what was true in uh march last year is probably not true in, a lot of it is not true in march this year and you know good marketers recognize that and and keep abreast of that Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ms. Reddy. Though there are many thank more you. questions coming in, but we'd really like to value uh, your time. And thank you sure. for joining thank us you. at the E4M Conclave. Thank you. Thank you for having me.